sessions will now be recorded. All right. Hello, everybody. How are we doing? My name is Claire Bartlett, and you're watching and listening to Me and My Racket. It's the show about tennis industry professionals sharing their purpose, passion, and connecting over the sport we all know and love. And today on the show, we have Sawyer and Callie Voges. Hey, you all. How's it going? Hey, Claire. Hey, Claire. How's it going? Good. Just want to introduce you all really quickly. Um, so Sawyer played tennis in Macaulay and went to play college tennis for Birmingham Southern. And he now works full time at Scenic City Financial as a new business manager. And Callie played tennis at Notre Dame in Chattanooga and studied nutrition and dietetics at UTK and now works full time as um, at Mutual of Omaha. And Callie is now the USTA Adult League Coordinator for Chattanooga. Callie, Sawyer, welcome to the show. How are y'all doing? Thanks for having us. Good. Appreciate having it. Us. Yeah, that no, was awesome. Thanks for coming on. What's been going on during this time? I know it's a different time for everybody. Yeah. Just trying to get used to the what everyone's saying, the new norm. Hopefully it's not the new norm, but yeah. Just trying to get used to all that. Yeah, no, I know it's um it's kind of hard to know what's going to happen cuz we have so many like unanswered questions and there's lots of uncertainty and the news yeah. keeps changing, but uh we're just doing the best we can, you know. <laughs> yeah. Making me stir crazy not being able to get on the court. I know, I know, right? Well, I've seen so y'all, y'all are getting out a little bit in your um, in not the garage, the driveway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Trying to do we're, some tennis. Yeah, we're we're getting dragged out there, keeping us active. Yeah. My dad's keeping us active, which is a good thing. Oh man, well that's great. Well, um, you all, I want to go ahead and dive right into um your tennis stories because I know there's a lot, and um just as a tennis family, there's there's a lot of room to cover. So. Um, and you all can go one at a time, whatever you want to do. But um, Callie, we can start with you. Just kind of let us into, you know, how you started tennis and, and growing up and um, to where you are now in your position. Um, started playing tennis just for fun. I mm -hmm. definitely did not play as much as my brothers and probably as much as my dad liked. I swam full time. Mm -hmm. So that was my main sport that I really liked. And But I did play tennis for Notre Dame, which was fun. Mm -hmm. um, kind of didn't play tennis while I was in college at all. But then when I got back to Chattanooga, I started playing USTA tennis and that really got me excited. And I probably love tennis and play more tennis now than I ever have. Wow. So yeah. definitely, I like it now more than I did growing up for sure. That's awesome. That's cool. Great. And Sawyer, what about you? Well, I. I started playing probably whenever I could actually walk. I don't, mm -hmm. that's, that would be my guess. Um, yeah. <laughs> and you know, my first tournament, I think I was seven years old. And ever since then, you know, I've been playing and practicing all the time. Mm -hmm. I, of course, like you said, played at Macaulay and then played at Birmingham Southern College down in Birmingham, Alabama, which mm -hmm. it was, uh, it moved from D1 to D3 about two years before I got there. Okay. Um, and that was a really fun experience and it was a little bit different from the day-to-day -day grind of growing up playing all the USCA tournaments. Division three was a challenge, but it wasn't my you know, life 24 seven. So it was a good change and I still got to compete and have fun. Um, and then after that, I took a little bit of a break and I don't play too often anymore, but I'm on the court teaching you know, yeah. 10 or so hours a week now. So, I, I got uh, my liking of the sport dragged me right back into it. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard to get away, especially like once yeah. you, um, yeah, been away for a bit and then you are faced to go to the gym and you're thinking tennis is way more fun yeah. <laughs> than going to the gym. So, yeah. Well, um, so it, like I said, with your introductions, you both have full-time jobs, but you're both involved in tennis still um, at different capacities. So tell us a little bit about that and what that looks like. So Callie, with you know being adult league coordinator for Chattanooga, what's your, um, I know it's not a typical time right now, but what, what typically does that look like and, and entail? Uh, typically, it's definitely, it's a new thing for me that I started this year, 2020. And so it's allowed me to meet a lot more people and get to know more tennis players in all different divisions, leagues, um, different areas of town. And so you're kind of just promoting tennis and getting adults out there playing, anyone that's 18 and over, mm -hmm. trying to schedule logistics, 
get the court time for teams and encourage more teams to play. That way they can have that experience locally. And then, you know, it's great too in the team that wins, they get to go to state and you get to move forward. So it's a fun way to be competitive, especially for adults. You know, you try to encourage the competitive tennis play. Yeah. For adults yeah. that play yeah. other sports growing up. Yeah. Do you get to play some, even though you're the coordinator, can you still, can you still get in there and play? Yes. I still yeah. play on all my same teams. Okay. And I love that. I play some in Georgia and in Tennessee. So I feel like I probably play three or four times a week. Not yeah. right now, of course, but. Yeah. Yeah. On a typical. Yeah. Typical week. Awesome. Time. Cool. And Sawyer, what about you? I know yours is a little different because you, you teach a lot um, and you teach on weekends. So tell us a little bit about that. And what that yeah, means. sure. Um, so I, I've always been you know teaching lessons here or there growing up from like junior year of high school, helping my dad out with mm -hmm. his tennis camps during the summers. And I didn't do any teaching for maybe about two years after I got my uh, full-time desk job out of college and uh, in between figuring out some different jobs, I started teaching again to help supplement the income. And yeah. I enjoyed it a lot and it was a great avenue to bring in some more money. And I got to pick a certain career that I was interested in and didn't have to worry too much about the exact salary I was getting or anything like that. So right. yeah. now I teach, you know, a couple hours during the week right after work starting at like six o'clock mm -hmm. or so and then on the weekends i help with our saturday junior clinic that's from about 10 to 11 30 and, and then sunday i'm on the court for about six to eight hours teaching wow. lessons yeah yeah that's that's a full schedule <laughs> yeah it is it, it i'm i'm always busy so sometimes i i forget that i have two different jobs yeah, yeah. Well, and both of you, like I know Callie, I, I haven't been an adult league coordinator, but I know that there's a ton of work that goes into that. And um, and sorry, just like what you were saying, like when you have a full-time job and then you go to teach, um, it can be challenging. So what do you all enjoy about still being able to be involved in your capacities? And then what are, what are some challenges? Um, I definitely say the time aspect of it, as you mentioned, you know, having a full-time job and then trying to be available for all those captains and players, you know, making that time for both jobs is definitely challenging with that aspect, but it's a lot of fun because I love getting to meet new people and tennis is so fun to me. And so I like to make that fun for others. So I definitely, I think the best part of it is meeting new people and getting to be out on the court, not only playing with them, but also helping it make a more enjoyable experience for them as well. Yeah, awesome. Sawyer? Well, I would say the, what I like about it the most is just getting, just interacting with whether it's an adult player, junior player, just casual player, getting right. to interact with them and te be able to watch them improve no matter whether they're trying to hit with me multiple times a week or just once a week for fun and just getting to watch them improve and the challenge of me trying, trying to problem solve and figure out, um, you know, what could help them improve the most or what the actual issue is with their ground stroke or whatever they want to work on. So right. I enjoy that challenge a lot. And I don't, that probably came from me watching my dad teach growing up and just kind of was of interest to me, but yeah. I'll say, the challenge would be just making sure that you know, I spend the appropriate amount of time on you know, my day job, my nine to five job, as well as tennis, because I don't want to just teach random lessons and not give any effort. I want to right. you know, watch videos and continuously educate myself with tennis stuff right. so that I can actually make an impact on the person. Right. Yeah, no, totally, totally for sure. Um, well, and, and like you mentioned, like you, um, you've seen your dad teach a lot and Callie, yeah. I know like y'all grown up as, as a tennis family, it's kind of a unique experience. Um, and I have this experience too with my mom being a tennis yeah. professional. And so I, I just wanted to see, um, you know, how y'all's experience was like, you know, Callie, I, I know you swam a good bit. Um, but what was that like having your dad as, 
is the tennis professional and director of tennis at Macaulay. It's a big, big deal. <laughs> yeah, it definitely, I mean, when I was in tennis season, it was nice to be able to come home from practice. Uh -huh. And if I felt like I was behind because I spent almost the rest of the year swimming, he would always get out there on the court after dinner and hit with me. Um, mm -hmm. So it was nice to have, you know, he was always available. So it was nice to yeah. have him. If we wanted to get better, he could help us. Yeah. And that was nice. He didn't like going to my swim meets, though, that's for sure. <laughs> Enjoyed more time if I wanted to play tennis. Oh, man. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's, uh, I would... I would say that, you know, if I didn't like tennis as much as I did, it uh -huh. probably would have not been as fun or as good of an experience for me. Just mm -hmm. uh, since I was actually on the team that he coached, it was, right. uh, I really enjoyed as a little kid getting to hit with him all the time and kind of having that at my disposal, kind of like yourself. Yeah, well, because yeah. we were at practices together, I remember it. Yeah, thing, you know? yeah. 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 Lot, yeah. lots of practices together, which, yeah. which was good. Um, but I would say that it was it was a struggle for me in high school, early in high school, with yeah. being you know the coach's son and yeah, that yeah, that type of situation. But I mm -hmm. I learned a lot from it, and definitely. I definitely would say that I enjoyed it being, yeah. the, being the coach's son in the long run. You know, there's yeah. a lot of lessons that I learned, but yeah. like Callie said about hitting with him after dinner, I remember mm -hmm. as a little kid, he would come home from a 10 or 12 hour day on the tennis court and probably wow. didn't want to do anything but sit and eat dinner and probably go to sleep. And I would beg him to go back to Macaulay to hit with me and he, he almost always did that without oh planning or anything. So that yeah. that his his enjoyment of the game definitely made it even more enjoyable for me. Yeah. Wow, that's neat. Well, yeah, and just just like you're saying, like when you see him so excited about it, it makes you want to get out there, or you yeah. know, it's not um, you know that he's not just doing it like because he wants to put pressure on you. It's because he loves the game and wants to share it with you, and right. however you want to do that. So yeah, really, really special. Um, well, so what advice or suggestions do you all have for professionals looking get, to get into the industry, whether that's, you know, part time, such as yourselves, um, even though it can feel like it's full time at some points, I'm sure, or, or for a career? Um, do you have any any advice or anything you've learned along the way? Sally? I guess, you know, if you want to get involved, definitely try to as you're playing tennis and you're going to tournaments or you're connecting with people involved um, in USDA, you know, always making your face known and talking to people and asking questions and, you know, always asking if there's help that's needed, whether that be locally um, or different. I think as long as you ask and you want to help and you're willing to, if you meet people and when you go to the tournaments and you're playing yourself, you'll definitely be able to hopefully make that happen. Yeah, yeah. I'd say. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I would say that along the same lines as Cali, but you know, use the connections that you have, whether you've been involved with tennis your whole life or if you're brand a brand new adult player. Just yeah. you've met some people along the way that you know that are running tournaments or are sending you emails. You can always reach out that way, uh, as far as you know, helping out with you know, the city and tennis and things like that. But if you're wanting to be more involved with junior tennis or just teaching like I'm doing, yeah. I would say most likely you've either played college tennis or played a lot in high school and want to uh, share that same experience you have. Reach out to the high school coach or the junior coach that you had and just see if they need help or see if they know somebody that needs help. And you can volunteer or uh, get lucky and get paid for maybe a summer camp or something like that. And yeah. yeah. Just start, just start there somewhere small, somewhere where you can slowly get into it. And yeah. And, and then in my situation, you know, you can, if you're not sure if you, you should do tennis or not, and you're kind of interested, but you don't have a clue what you're going to be doing with your career as yeah. most people don't right out of college. Right. Yeah, I didn't need, I mean, yeah. 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 everybody. I, and right. like, I, I still don't. That's yeah. why I have two jobs. Yeah. Right? Uh, but yeah. 
you can you can look for jobs that are you know, desk jobs or any other type of job and then do tennis on the side and just see where it takes you. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Well, and like y'all both are saying, you meet so many people through tennis and so many different walks of life and people are just like at different places. So it's pretty cool to connect over something like that. And, and you just never know what doors that's gonna open, whether it leads to tennis or something else. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, good cool. part of the sport, I think. What'd you say, Kylie? I said that's a good thing in the sport. Yeah, oh yeah, no, it's big for sure. Well, um, at this point in the interview, I'd <laughs> like to um, bring in a special guest. Turner, are you there? <laughs> yeah, I'm here. All right, yeah, we well, can all get in the frame. Yeah. Um, and for our viewers, um, yeah, Turner, if you haven't figured out already, this is a family. So yes. <laughs> Turner, Callie, and Sawyer, um, big tennis family. And I'm sure Eric and Lori are around somewhere, but <laughs> wanted to have you all three on screen. Um, and Turner, I do want to give a, you a quick introduction um, for our viewers and our listeners. So you all, Turner, he's played at Macaulay as well, and he played college tennis at Memphis, and now he's at UTC. And um, he has a little bit to tell us about how the year has gone because of all the, um, you know, things with COVID recently and all the changes. Um, and you're working on your master's, your MBA, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah. So, um, oh, sorry. Were you going to say something? No, go ahead. Okay. No, I, I just, um, I just want to say, hey, and uh, just tell us what's been going on because it's, uh, it's been quite a ride from what I hear right. for other people. <laughs> yeah, it's been a really weird, really weird year for sure. Um, yeah. So I guess, yeah, like season got canceled about half, mm -hmm. a little past halfway through. Um, I know for us, we were down on spring break in Florida. Um, we were seeing some things getting canceled and we were still playing some matches. And mm -hmm. I remember we were playing North Florida and then finished the match. I think went to dinner after and then um, by the time we were done with dinner we realized that the rest of the season was canceled um, so we were supposed to be going to play Kennesaw State I think a few days later on the way back home um, so that was canceled so that was really weird um, we didn't really know what was going to happen thankfully we've gotten they gave all the spring student athletes another year of eligibility Okay. So yeah. I'm going to be able, I decided to come back and play another year because I have another year with my master's as well. Yeah. Um, so I'm still not done with the college tennis yet. It's, <laughs> yeah. Because it's yeah. I did, um, I was at Memphis for four years and then one of the years I was red shirt because I was hurt. And then once I graduated, I came to UTC just to do this one year of tennis, but mm -hmm. it's turning into two now. So um, I'm hey, pretty that's yeah. That's fine, yeah. <laughs> I know, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. I think we have a we have a really good team. We had a good team this year. Mm -hmm. that was one of the reasons I chose Chattanooga, I knew it'd be a good team. Obviously, it's nice coming home. Chattanooga yeah. is a great tennis city. I mean, it's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's nice to have a lot of familiar faces and um, mm -hmm. fans out at matches. And yeah. Then, yeah. Um, yeah, we really had a good team, and I thought we had a good chance of winning the conference this year. So that was something I looked for for sure, because yeah, you know, really exciting to bring a conference championship back to Chattanooga. I mean, such a yeah. good tennis city. So oh yeah, um, you know, yeah. thankfully I'll have another year to get to try to do that. So I think yeah. we'll have an even better team next year. I'm looking forward to it. I know yeah. our coaches; he does a great job. Um, yeah. and we have a lot of good guys on the team, so. Yeah. Really looking forward to it. It's been great so far at UTC. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that sounds really exciting. And like you said, you know, just having that whole other year, it's like a whole other year to train and like get ready physically and mentally. And right. um, you, know, you just don't know what's going to happen after all that preparation. So exactly. Exciting. So this is a good, uh, this is a good trial run, I guess this year was. So <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, good deal. Well, um, well, so I, uh, I kind of wanted to talk with all three of you because, you know, like we've said, you know, tennis has been in all of y'all's lives at some capacity throughout um, and you're just big tennis family. And I was just interested in what are some like memorable moments you all has, have as a family, um, you know, with with tennis through all this? Uh, I'll go ahead and start. And I, one thing that involves you know, our whole family would uh -huh. be growing up, you know, my dad's dad or grandfather that we call Paul Paul. Yeah, he, 
he and my dad would have Voges tennis clinics. And so we have uh, 14 total cousins, including us three. Wow. So yeah. we, we would all be out there playing and my grandfather mm -hmm. and my dad would be teaching us and mm -hmm. uh, my my aunts would be getting out there too, including my mom. They didn't stay, they didn't, I think they showed up for maybe one <laughs> clinic and that was it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that that's mm -hmm. a, definitely a fond memory for me and mm -hmm. a lot of our cousins too, just getting yeah. to be close to everyone and hang out and play a little tennis. That's been a huge part of our family and we would always go out to eat afterwards too so that was a good time oh, that's fun yeah cool <laughs> Callie Turner do you have any other yeah ones? definitely I mean <laughs> tennis was for sure a big part of our life I think yeah. most of our Christmas cards growing up involved the tennis courts <laughs> whether that was us sitting in a tennis basket or playing tennis on the court so definitely you know, I love tennis by itself, but I think I like it too because it brought our family together. Yeah. Which was fun, a good activity. Our mom doesn't play, but it was fun playing with everyone else. Yeah. When I always see her, she's always so supportive, you know, she's, she's always somewhere. So it's been, it's yes, been she's watching. there. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, for me, there's a lot. I think one of the coolest things was growing up, going to the Macaulay tennis matches and watching. Um, mm -hmm. And then when Sawyer started playing, it was really cool to be able to go because I grew up watching those matches all the time and really liked it. So then yeah. going and watching Sawyer was always really cool. Um, <laughs> and I think Sawyer's senior year when they won state championship, our whole yeah. family was there. My grandfather and Callie and I were watching. Um, so that was a really cool memory. And then yeah. also I got to watch Callie. We were up at the state tournament as well. <laughs> And I think we were playing in the finals, and Callie was as well. Um, and Callie Notre Dame won. I didn't, so I'm still oh my so, God. I'm so <laughs> salty about it. I'm the one not yeah. a state champion, I guess, of the three of us, which yeah. I do have more time about. But it was really cool to be able to see both of them um, do yeah. that with the whole family around. That's really neat. That's awesome. <laughs> well, cool. Well, um, y'all talk a little bit more about these videos. Um, I feel like so many people have seen them, I, and it's just it's awesome. I know all of y'all have been involved with them at them in various points. So how did how did this start up, and um, what's what's it been like? Well, I'll I'll start. Okay. I mean, I'm so sick of them. Um, you what? I, I'm sick of them. We, I've had to be in so many videos. But a lot of people are really liking them, and mm -hmm. everyone's telling my dad how much they like them. Yeah. And if everyone could stop doing that, that'd be great. Because <laughs> yeah. I have to, I'll be studying in my room, and he'll come up and get me to video him baking oh my God. pancakes and relating it to tennis. Um, oh, yeah. But a lot of the videos are actually really cool. I think it's good to see him. You know, it's it's funny. A lot of people are liking it. Um, yeah. I probably like him the least out of everyone, but I've just, I've been around him a lot and I'm sure my, well, if my mom was here, she probably likes him the least, but yeah. I, I, do. I think everyone really likes him. So y'all can say more about him. But, oh, yeah. 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 I mean, it's cool to see how it is when you're in the middle of doing something and then you have to stop and he says, we've got to make a video right now, either whether that's us videoing or he calls right. me Vita. I'm Vanna in the videos. Um, I mean, it is cool to see how he takes the day-to-day -day aspect of life or cooking or something and turns it around and relates it to tennis. So yeah, definitely, that's interesting and very takes a very smart tennis person to relate yeah. food or that aspect to the tennis. But I'm glad <laughs> he's doing it. Keeps him entertained. You know, yeah. going from being on the court ten hours a day probably to not is very challenging. So. Yeah, yeah, because um, I can't see him or any of y'all really sitting still, so it's. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm surprised he's not back here behind the window <laughs> working on the video right now. My, uh, my mom and wife are here, so I'm they might be over in the corner videoing some new. Oh my god! But wow. I, I think it's pretty cool because I've been trying to, you know, I show them random videos from Instagram mm -hmm. that people have created or. You know, yeah. just the online stuff about tennis and it took yeah. a pandemic for him to start doing it himself but I, I, don't know yeah. if we'll, I don't know if we'll regret that or not but I, <laughs> I've enjoyed I've enjoyed 
the videos and yeah he surprises me just about every day with something he's doing yeah <laughs> but it is it is good he, he gets a lot of people sending him videos of their kids playing outside and uh, um, videos of them doing trick shots and stuff so it has as much as i don't like it it has done a really good job of getting other people out and i know he really enjoys seeing the people he's used to hitting with every day though them go and play in their driveway or something so yeah it, is, it has been entertaining yeah when it's really brought yeah like you're saying it's brought people together which in this time is huge that's, that's right a big deal. so once well, Sawyer, you were doing your videos for a while too can you talk a little bit about those yeah um so i i put out a video or two and then did the mm -hmm. one with my dad and i've put a couple you know pictures out there and you know, random right. quotes or just kind of explanations on different tennis aspects and I just started it right before this and I need to start posting more um, yeah. I've, to add on to everything I'm doing. I've considered doing some sort of online tennis business and yeah. it's early stages and I don't know if I'll completely follow through with all of it, but I'm trying mm -hmm. to, I don't want to just put out random, like how to hit a forehand or the right. other way to do this or that. Cause that's, that seems like what everyone is doing. So I'm trying to figure mm -hmm. out, how I can be of value and be different than others, yeah. whether it's, you know, strategy for matches and things like that. So I'm yeah. kind of brainstorming at the moment and posting here and there. Yeah. Well, looking forward to seeing what you come up with there. Thank too. You. Um, well, you also to shift a little bit, go, go into a little deeper question. Um, who have been your mentors or like heroes that you look up to? And it can be in tennis or outside of tennis and, but, you know, um, regardless of what that is, like who have those people been and what qualities do they possess? Um, yeah. I can guess. Yeah. I can go. Yeah. Um, I definitely probably say my dad. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always looked up to him growing up. But as mm -hmm. I entered the workforce, I definitely realized his work ethic that I watch as well as mm -hmm. what he taught us work ethic wise, whether that was on the tennis court and teaching us or in our studies, he definitely taught us um, to be team players and that's how he parented us. And mm -hmm. so I've seen that play a huge role in my work life and how that has helped me grow at work and different stuff. So I definitely say my dad and him teaching us that value of work ethic and to be team players always. Yeah, no, that's huge. Cool. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I definitely have multiple people from different aspects of life that have been mm -hmm. mentors or someone I've looked up to, but mm -hmm. associating tennis and life together, mm -hmm. I, I'd have to say that it would be my dad and my grandfather just mm -hmm. kind of together. They, they both, like Callie said, uh, she kind of said a similar point, but mm -hmm. both of them showed our family how, how to have a successful and very busy career but put mm -hmm. family and God first. Mm -hmm. But be, so it's cool to be able to see that you can put 100% effort into multiple different areas of your life and they can all be successful or be enjoyable to you. Yeah. Um, so definitely both of them. And my, my grandfather, the reason that I would say him as well outside of the tennis stuff mm -hmm. would just be from he took a risk early on and started his own pharmacy and oh, it's still running today. Our uncle Alan's running it, but mm -hmm. just hearing stories about him and from him made me real interested in just the idea of like business and entrepreneurship. So it's right. been, he was a big, uh, he had a big impact on me. Yeah. Cool. Turner? Um, I guess I'd have to go with my dad too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just being around him, just growing up and uh -huh. then just spending a lot of time with him on court and everything. And then especially having him as a high school coach as well, middle school and high school, um, just mm -hmm. had a lot of time around him and I'm sure he had his hands full with us for sure. Um, I remember earlier when you, I was listening on the side, you were asking them about what it was like having our dad as a coach and, they said a lot of really good things and there were some really good things for sure. But, um, there was also some things that were awful, like 
I had a, probably a bit of an attitude problem, I'm sure, yeah. in high school. And there was a lot of times where I'd throw my racket or something or mm -hmm. have a bad attitude and get kicked out of practice. But then, you know, you have to wait for your dad to take you home or you have to walk home. Really? You know, or <laughs> I'd call my mom and she'd say, well, I mean, you're, you're not supposed to be coming home for a few more hours. Like, so yeah. she wouldn't pick me up. So um, I think that straightened me out pretty quick when you had to like, have your dad yell at you at practice and then ride yeah. home with them awkwardly and then sit for dinner with them too. Um, oh, man. So that was yeah. a good um, – that was good. And like Sora mm -hmm. was saying, the hard work and everything, he, uh, he helped me a lot just working hard with school and tennis and everything and reaching your goals. Like mm -hmm. playing college tennis was one of my goals for sure. We would, we would yeah. go and watch um, – he played at UT, so we'd go and watch UT matches all the time. And yeah. on spring break, we'd go down to Florida and watch matches. And it was just really cool experience and something that um, that was my main goal growing up. And he helped me figure out how to do that and everything. So I'm really thankful for that for sure. Yeah, great. <laughs> well, neat. Well, we've we've talked a lot about tennis. What do you all like to do off court uh, when you're not when you're not organizing or teaching or playing? What do y'all like to do? Hi, I miss traveling right now. Traveling. That is, I love traveling. I have a lot of friends that live different places. So if I'm not playing tennis on the weekends, which happens a lot, I love traveling um, mm -hmm. to visit all kinds of places. And I love traveling for tennis. That's been one of my favorite things about getting back into it. I love going to the state tournaments and sectionals. Yeah. Yeah, because then when you're at a place, you have like a purpose too. You know, you get to yeah. sports and play, and <laughs> yeah, you get a lot of exercise in too. Yeah. Well, uh, where's the last place that you went, Callie? Before all this, where you traveled? I went to, I think New Orleans was my last mm -hmm. place. I was going to say California, but yeah. New Orleans. It was fun. I love the food. Great mm -hmm. place. I've never been there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. The food's, cool. good. the food's good. Yes. I love food. <laughs> That's, I travel for the food and the experience and the, yeah. the seeing new places. I like that. Yeah. So, um, I, I like most of the time if I'm not on the court or mm -hmm. at work, I'm you know, spending time with my wife and hanging out with her and we have yeah, a, congrats. Y'all are newly yeah. married. Congratulations. Yeah, got married back in September. So it's been a yeah. weird first year of marriage for sure with all this. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, but we have a great group of friends, whether they were uh, people I knew before we got married or people she knew and new friends that we've met, but we that we enjoy hanging out with. And we she grew up in Saudi Daisy close by. So okay. we, like yeah. to, we like to try to spend time on the lake as often as we can too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But it's nice, nice out in the lake, especially now. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully all this will, you know, we want to be safe, but uh, we don't yeah. want to make too much of good weather. <laughs> yeah, yeah. De definitely ready for this to be over and the good weather to be there for us. Oh, yeah. And Turner, what, what do you Well, like? going off of that thing Sora said about the lake, really, you know, really happy to have Sora's wife, Allie, and the family, but she does live on a lake, so that's a huge, that's really big addition to the family. Um, love going to the lake. Uh, mm -hmm. Just Chattanooga is a good place to get outdoors, like going hiking, everything. Um, really like just, yeah, lake a lot. Like uh, supporting the local businesses like Clyde's. Going yeah, Clyde's is great. Um, big fan of that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, it's, it's been pretty busy with, school and tennis the last few years so yeah um, anytime i get the chance to relax I like doing that a lot so and yeah. then traveling some as well i mean cali travels more than any person i've met in my life it's insane <laughs> but um, yeah. it's fun we i went to europe last summer and um mm -hmm. was there for about five weeks and cali came and visited me for a week in ireland mm -hmm. and uh, she kind of helped me figure out how to get this travel bug that she um, she has so <laughs> yeah because once sure. you have it it doesn't go away <laughs> I know, so, yeah. Um, yeah it's those are probably the things I like doing the most yeah well awesome well cool y'all well um, I wanted to open it up to you all for, for this last bit um, just tell tell us and the viewers anything you'd like to promote you know if you have a website or a project you're working on or just if you want to tell somebody your favorite song, like whatever you, whatever you want to do, um, go for it. 
Uh, well, first, first thing I'd like to say, um, sorry to interrupt. No, no, no. Kind of like get started, but uh, the first thing I'd like to say is that you know we mentioned my dad a lot, but mm. we we wouldn't be where we are as a family without my mom. And he he my dad would not be where he is without her. So got got to bring her up, yes, and we would so not be we yeah. if it was just my dad around, we would probably be out doing a tennis video right now so <laughs> thank goodness for her oh man well that's yeah that's really special this is the most we've probably talked about tennis in the house though where uh really? my mom has a very strict no tennis discussions especially yeah. for dinner but you know oh, we can sneak off to the side maybe yeah uh, and talk about it but if she's around she's she's had a really she's had 30 years of hearing about tennis all the time so yeah well, that's she, uh, she's supportive. She comes to our matches, watches uh -huh. from far away because she gets nervous. But when we're here, it's when we're here, she's in charge, and we uh, we don't get to talk about tennis as much when she's yeah. around. But. Well, and there's so I mean, as we we all love tennis, but there's so many other things, right? In uh, life yeah. besides tennis, so that's good because then it allows you know for other discussion. Mm -hmm. For so, sure, but I would right. say um, if there's anyone in Chattanooga or mm -hmm. outside areas. Um, definitely reach out to me. Um, I think you can find on the USTA Tennessee website, Adult Leagues. Um, my contact should be on there. Mm -hmm. If you're new, you haven't started playing tennis, or you've played for a while and getting back into it, there's so many different leagues. Once we're able to all play again, I'd love to help you out. And It's so fun for me, and I like seeing new people out on the court. So definitely reach out if you want to get interested in tennis. In Chattanooga. Great. <laughs> For me, I, I would say if the once this, the pandemic ends or once it calms down and everything opens back up, if we're able to have you know, the summer camps, definitely check out the Macaulay Tennis Summer Camp. I grew up going to it. Of course, my dad runs it, but there's lots of good instructors there and you get to learn from all levels. So definitely check out any of those and then once we get the clinic started back up on Saturday any level any age is welcome so uh, definitely get involved with tennis if you're interested from seeing all my dad's videos or yeah. any <laughs> other videos out there and I'm, yeah. I'm also available for lessons and we have multiple people that are uh, interested in giving lessons at Macaulay so great thanks Turner, what's uh, going on? <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not working on too much, really. Uh, taking it easy, uh -huh. doing classes. Um, I will say the college tennis matches are a lot of fun for anyone who hasn't been. Mm -hmm. That's what made me fall in love with tennis, the Macaulay matches and college tennis matches. It's just a whole different type of tennis, I think, than um, maybe what you see on TV. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's still a high level, but it's just a lot of energy. It's a lot of fun. You can scream, go nuts, and that's something I really like. I really like watching growing up, and I really like doing. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I'd say we're going to be really good next year, the Chattanooga tennis team. Um, yeah. So I'd say, I guess that's the only thing I'm working on. Maybe come to some matches; mm -hmm. it'll be pretty fun. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, for Mox. <laughs> yeah, go Mox. Pl planning on winning a lot next year, so hopefully we can do yeah. that. And uh, yeah, they're always fun to go, and we always love the support. It's good to see some familiar faces out there. So. Yeah. Well, great. Not, for me, not too yeah. much compared to well, these. Two. Well, well, thanks so much, you all, for coming on the show. I really enjoyed talking with y'all and and learning. I feel like learn learn all sorts of things about each other. Yeah. yeah. yeah sure. Thanks, Claire. Thanks, thanks Claire. for having us. Yeah. yeah. Fun. And for, for our viewers, like we we all kind of well, we grew up in the same town, obviously, and we have a lot of similar experience. So it's cool. It's like we never really get this time with anybody to sit down and just talk about like things like this, you know, and stories yeah. so that if there's one special thing about this time, it's, it's the time that we are given now. So just really appreciate it again. Y'all coming on. Right. Yeah. It's, no, it's thank fun. you. It's always good to remember this. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Thanks. Well, and to our viewers, thanks so much. And our listeners, thanks again for tuning in. Um, if you all like the content and you're on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe down below and click the little notification button so you don't miss any any content because we're going to have some more guests on here soon. And we're on Facebook and Instagram at uh, Me and My Racket, so go find us there.
So thanks again, and we will see you all next time. Bye for thanks now. Bye. Bye. Thanks, y'all. Bye.